Greetings, beloved. I'm Dr. Felicia LaBoy, lead pastor and life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois, with another motivational moment from the Bible. These motivational moments are designed to help you take what you hear in church on Sunday or some other time, what you may learn during your private devotional time, or what you may even hear online, to take those biblical concepts and to make them a part of your everyday life. If you were anywhere in the world, you know this past Sunday, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday or for the rest of the world, Easter Sunday. For Christians, Resurrection Sunday is our high holy day, right? It's the day that we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead, which also means that for those of us who are in Christ, we too are a promised eternal life, that death doesn't have the final say-so over our lives, right? If you're part of the rest of the world or even part of the church, then you know Easter Sunday is a big deal, right? So every store is already filled with, was filled with Easter clothes and carrots and bunnies and candy and all of that, right? And while all of that's important, even and very important, especially when we think about um, even something like eternal life, that's not the whole of the story. You know, I have said to people over and over, lots of times the message in the past has been come to church and don't really, the subtle message has been get saved and don't go to hell, right? And what I've said to people recently is that folk ain't afraid of hell anymore. Either they live there <laughs> um, because of all the turmoil and stuff going on in their lives, or the issue is they're good people and so they're not worried about it. So if that's the case, that folks aren't worried about eternal life, how then does the Easter or the resurrection message apply to our life right now? Well, to understand that, I want to take us back to that first resurrection Sunday morning. We're told in the all of the Gospels, but we're going to just look at Luke this morning, we're told that Mary Magdalene and several of the other women went to the tomb that first um, Resurrection Sunday morning. They went there with herbs and spices, preparing, going to prepare the body of Jesus, to uh, put the embalming spices on it and wrap it up. They did this because on Good Friday, when, when um, Jesus' body is laid in the tomb, there's no time to prepare the embalming of that body. Only thing that can be done is wrapping his body and putting it in the tomb and they have to wait till after the Sabbath is over to uh, put the spices on his body. When they get there, there is no body. Not only is there no body, right? The angels are there. And they're saying, listen, he's not here. He's risen, just like he told you that he was going to do. The napkin that would have covered his face is folded up as if someone was finished with it. The, the clothes that swaddled him in death are bunched up, balled up at the side. But here is something that I never saw before, and I hope you'll focus in with that with me. While the women are there, astonished, they don't know what to make of this, right? Did someone steal the body? What happened? All of that. The angel says these provocative words to the women and to us. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Now, while we always focus on the he is not here, but is risen, I don't know if you're like me, I never saw how often there is a contradiction to the word dead in that whole passage that first Easter Sunday morning. And it's summed up by the angel's words, why do you seek the living among the dead? Even when Jesus, disguised as the gardener, talks to Mary, he's like, why, why are you looking after dead things? Okay, Pastor Felicia, that's a quick Easter story. What difference does it make to us? I'm so, so glad that you asked. As some of you have heard me say before, my husband, Adrian, is, um, he is a really good gardener. He loves to garden. He's really good at it. And watching him be a gardener has taught me a lot about how God deals with us, right? 
the one thing that he's been doing over these last several weeks in preparation for the new growth that's there, he's been clearing away everything that's dead. Dead plants, dead weeds, sticks, branches. He's been clearing away all the dead things so that there's room enough for new birth, for new growth to appear. In essence, he is saying these words. He's communicating that, right? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Just like Adrian knows that dead, that living things cannot grow well among dead things, I'm here to tell you that in your life, if you want something new, if you want something bold, if you want God to do a rebirth, a reset, a renewal in your life, then just like Adrian is clearing out the dead things, just like the angel said to the women, why are you seeking the living among the dead? You and I have a responsibility to clear out the dead things of our lives. What are you talking about, Pastor Felicia? We don't have any dead things in our lives. Really? Really? What about some dead attitudes? Holding on to grudges or grievances, holding on to a past that's been long gone, keeping five or six sizes of clothes in your closet because, well, you know, you might get back into them. What about having all of these old clothes and if they come back in style, it's going to be in another 20 years? What about um, just holding on to the memories from yesteryear so much so that you can't move forward. What about how we do that even in our churches, right? That it, we've got to keep a hold of the tradition. We've got to keep hold of all of these things that no longer serve us. That's what a dead thing is. Jesus left all of that stuff behind, the napkin, the cloth, all of that, because it didn't serve him. It was attached to his body being dead. Beloved, you and I, if we want something new, we're going to have to go through and spring clean our lives and remove the junk, remove the clutter, remove what is dead so that we can have something new. Good friend of mine, Jason Gordon, always says, if you don't get rid of some stuff, you can't have anything new because the new and the old can't exist at the same time. Now, am I saying that the old is not important? No. Am I saying that tradition is not important? No. I'm saying some stuff has served its purpose and it's time for it to go. So, beloved, as we prepare to walk into the spring and the summer, as we are asking God to reset things in our lives, what are some things that are dead, that don't give any life? to you or to me, what are some things in our lives that need to go? Can I help you? I'll, I'll, I'll share with um, you with some of the things that I'm looking at. Some of you all may know that I was a professor for quite some time. I got books. You don't want to know how many books I have. And while I appreciate all of that, many of them have served their purpose. And so I probably have at least 10 cases of books that I'm going to get rid of. I was looking in my closet the other day and I noticed just how many clothes I had there that I'm not wearing anymore. I'm getting rid of all of that. I've noticed too that some of the attitudes that I have, some ways of thinking, um, can I share this with you? Even some places where I'm codependent. What does that mean, Pastor Felicia? Codependent person is a person who's hooked on helping. I'm I'm leaving all of that stuff behind because I want God to do something new in my life. When Mary leaves the tomb that first Sunday morning, when Jesus, she leaves all of that behind, when she leaves the graveyard of what was behind, she sparks the beginning of who the 12 are going to be. When she tells them that Jesus has risen from the dead, Mary moves from a person who is... Um, from a place of prostitution, then say she was a prostitute, said was a Magdalene, Magdala is a place of prostitution. She moves from there to being an evangelist and a preacher woman. Beloved, what are you and I holding on to that God is done with, that it is 
dead. What attitudes, what longings, what's... <sighs> Some of us are holding on to the idea that you know, we had a friend who betrayed us, and because of that, we're not going to let anybody get close. Some of us keep telling God we'd like a spouse, but, you know, same thing. Some of us are holding on to who we used to be, and because of that, we can't be who God intends for us to be now in this season of our life. Whatever was there, you know, it's funny about a dead thing. Whatever was there is meant to fertilize the new thing. You can carry what's good from what's dead. Jesus still has a body, but it's been transformed. A lot to think about, right? So I pray you'll take some time this week and think about, pray about, ask God, what junk, what dead thing, attitude, people, stuff, longings, what dead thing do you and I need to leave behind so that we might have the new thing that God is trying to bring us? Beloved, I pray that you'll stick around for this week's Refresh Your Soul moment, which is a song entitled by the, it's entitled the same words of the, our scripture for this week. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Pray you'll meditate on that song and meditate on what God is asking you to leave, be, um, that's dead, to leave behind. Beloved, I am Dr. Felicia LeBoy, lead pastor and life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois. Be blessed. Happy resurrection. Not day, life. Leave it behind. Talk to you soon. Love you.
know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels sing. Hallelujah.